What sort of evaluation does a couple need prior to going forward with uh, an in vitro cycle? Okay. In an evaluation, we evaluate the woman's ovarian reserve. In evaluating her ovarian reserve, frequently we have her come in on the second or third day of her menstrual flow. We do a vaginal ultrasound and do an antral follicle count. An antral follicle count enables us to visualize how many resting follicles she has. In addition to this, on the same day, we do hormonal testing. FSH level, estradiol level, AMH level. These are the ovarian reserve gold standard testing to see exactly what a woman's ovarian reserve is. Ovarian reserve is an ability for us to predict how well a woman will do in an in vitro cycle, how many eggs she will have, what is her overall ability to get pregnant using her own eggs. Okay. There are many situations where women are exposed to different pollutants or toxins, where they live in a developing country, or they work in an environment where there are lots of toxins or chemicals or smoke or tobacco, or they smoke themselves, or they drink alcohol, which is a toxin as well, or they smoke marijuana and do drugs, which are different toxins. All of these things can have a dramatic impact on a woman's ability to make eggs that are healthy, that have the ability to become embryos and healthy children. So we check the ovarian reserve, which also can be negatively impacted on a woman, by a woman's age, as well as with her own genetic makeup. So you can have a woman who is completely healthy in her overall health, who is relatively young in the fertility world, 25, 26, but she may have genetic reasons that will cause her to have a reduced ovarian reserve and a low chance of pregnancy. So that's why it's very important to screen for ovarian reserve prior to going forward in an IVF cycle. Uterine environment. It's very important to make sure that the woman's uterine environment is normal, that she does not have any scarring inside the uterus that she does not have any uh, filling defects or growths or tumors that would prevent an embryo from being able to implant and become healthy. Mm -hmm. That it is not a congenital abnormality or a birth defect within the growth and development of the uterus. Because I've been so fortunate to take care of so many women who need surrogates, we have many patients in our practice whose uteruses are abnormal from birth They've been surgically removed because of cancers or tumors. Women who have been born without a uterus, which I will talk about under my unusual case videos. Uterine environment is very important to make sure that the inside of the uterus is healthy, as well as that we can gently get a catheter through the cervix into the uterus. So when it comes time to placing embryos, we can get the embryos into the uterus in a very safe, and gentle way to maximize a woman's chances for pregnancy.